Hello again, everybody. It's Plowboy, Plowboy's Ghost. I'm going to share with you something I've had ongoing for a little bit. I've been talking to AR American and uh, Wild Snapper and Garrett from 11 Bang Bang about this along the way. We've been text messaging each other. And y'all, I bought some material from guitar parts and more. They make an imitation, well, they make two or three different grades of imitation ivory. This is, this is a resin ivory. Well, well, before I get ahead of myself, one of the one of the problems I see with a lot of imitation ivory is even if it's great looking material, even if it's durable and dense material, very rarely, in my limited experience, very rarely does any of it really look like real ivory. Having the uh, Schrager lines, the uh, the grain that you can see beneath the surface inside of it, and on the end grain. There are imitation ivories that don't have that that I really like, and uh, Magna Tusk is one of them. Well, I may un unload my Blackhawk. I'll t show you what I did. I got some of this stuff from Guitar Parts and more. This is their Resin S Plus S, S Plus, whatever it is. And I reckon that's supposed to stand for Schrager for the Schrager lines in it. Material, and with enormous difficulty, not because of the material quality, but because of the lack of my uh, experience in making grips and some of my own goofs and a learning curve, I, it took me a while to get this done. And I did goof. Now I'll tell you, go ahead and tell you what I had to do before I even show you the grips. Here you can see these are two pieces. This was a finished grip at one time. It was ready for the, the fair rule and because I drilled the hole too small and tried to force the ferro rule in there just a little bit too much, of course, what do you think's gonna happen? Yeah, I figured out what's gonna happen, I broke it. So I contacted the man that owns the company and explained to him my goof and uh, just wanted to buy one more block of material off of him. And he said that was an unusual thing, so apparently he doesn't have any much problem with it. It's just somebody like me really goofing it up. He sold me one more block and I bore y'all, I took my time this time. Here's the way it turned out. Now I have no idea if y'all are gonna be able to see the lines in that with this lighting beneath the surface. And I have unloaded this gun, so you'll, if I point it at myself, you don't flip out. Just go appendix holster a loaded in Glock and feel better about yourselves. This has got lines in the material, it's down inside of it and once you've polished it on out you can really see it it's even got kind of a herringbone pattern in the end grain sort of like what real ivory would have now you can tell that in my fitment that i've goofed on corners i come up just a little bit short a little bit shy you know along a couple of places but i really did spend i'm going to show you the back side of it i did spend a lot of time on it and finished it up today this is what i'm going to call this finished because it's good enough for me i'm not going to get it much better what i'm going to do is i'm going to continue on until i drop a grip panel while working on it and i'm going to tell you if you drop this on this material on concrete there's a pretty good chance that it's going to chip and I've had it happen a couple of times. And of course, I'm sure he, you know, the man that had made this stuff and is selling the stuff isn't, isn't making it to be dribble like a basketball. So that's on me. This is not a complaint in any way of, on his material. But luckily I had enough thickness that I was able to file on down. And but that's the way that I did this. And I might scroll in a couple of pictures here in a minute of, of the process as it was ongoing. That material, um, the way that I did it, I cut it out with a scroll saw, not a scroll saw, but a, um, oh, uh, shoot. It'll come to me in a minute. With a coping saw by hand, I, I put the block of material after I had drawn out my pattern on the block. I used a coping saw and I gave myself what I thought was a generous amount around the lines that I had drawn. Well, sometimes it's not as generous as you thought when, you know, once things are squared up, well, I worked it all out. I worked it with a file until I got it down to where, and that's the first point. So that you'll, if you're gonna do this stuff, some of y'all probably know this better than me. You square it up here, as long as it's fitting down here, you know, 
this way and you're not gonna be have metal hanging over your grip material from the grip frame, you square in right here and right up here, these two points. Once this fits, as far as I'm concerned, and I laid this material on uh, some sandpaper, some 320 grit sandpaper on this table, a flat, very flat surface, and I got it perfectly flat and smooth before I started working this, and I squared up these corners. Once I got that and it was all in line, this right here was gonna have plenty of material for me to take off all the way around. Then I went ahead and, and marked and drilled my little pin location hole down here at the bottom. And once I had that block mounted in there, then I could start working my, my lines and taking it down with a file and rounding it off. And y'all, this is not gonna be a tutorial on how to make homemade grips. Cause I'll tell you, I'm, I found out that I'm not really that good at it. And that's got me second guessing my ability to fit a Ronnie Wells grip frame. Of course, I did learn some things and I'll try to pass on a couple of things to y'all real quickly if you'll indulge me. This material chips real easy with it if you drop it. Not real easy, but it will chip if you drop it on the concrete. It will also chip out the hole around your screw hole there if you're not careful with your drill speed and pressure and everything. And I, I chipped it. Luckily, I had enough thickness this way that when I chipped it, I could just file right over and, you know, and, and as I was shaping it, I was able to, to eliminate all of the chipped out portion. But, you know, the next time I do it, if I'm not careful, I might not be as lucky. I might not have enough meat to take off. So I guess my question is, is this the best imitation ivory? Well, if you have a an experienced you know, grip maker, make them for you, or if you are an experienced grip maker, you will probably have a better experience than I did. I was not very happy with this up until today. And I'm, like I said, I'm still just a little bit shy of the grip frame in a couple of spots and on one corner. But you know, I can really live with that because it's not that bad. The factory grips that came on this were horrendous, just like Garrett 11 Bang Bang was talking about with his and his video on his Black Hawk he just got. Those black plastic factory grips, I love Ruger, y'all, but the other, they must be just throwing them out the door with a grip. Hey, here, take this, and if it fits, it fits good. It's probably an XR3. It looked like it could be an XR3 grip trying to be on an XR3 red frame. I'm not sure what the deal was, but this is so much better. And I'll tell you another reason that I like this too. On the factory grips, you got a bevel down here. You know, looking underneath it here, they people tend to bevel the bottom of the grips, you know, when it's upside down, kind of up, which would be up, you know, when the gun's turned right side up. Well, that limits the amount of, of little finger that I can get on the grip. So what I did was I, and I once again, point and unload a gun. What I did was I tried to square those off as best as I could down through there. And that gave me the extra length to get some more pinky on it right there. And I'm here to tell you when you're shooting, uh, you know, really Ruger on reloads through these guns, I want all of the, all of the, you know, hand I can get. I want all the control and the grip I can get on this gun. And I'll tell you the truth, With once I did that, I'm not really thinking about the Bisley as much, although I have considered several times taking all the Bisley grip frame and all the parts and swapping them between this Vaquero and this Blackhawk, but I'm not going to do that because that, that Vaquero Bisley is really a special gun to me, and it's, I don't know, there's just something about that thing. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels, and this is a little different gun. I can't swear to you that that won't end up uh, with a Ronnie Wells grip frame or a Bisley grip frame and the parts on this and, and changing some things up. But this is what I did in the meantime because I kind of like the look of a blue gun, you know, the black and the white ivory or whatever. And, you know, I'm a little deeper into that than I wanted to be. I'm just, since I had to reorder a panel, you know, for another $35 on top, I'm in just probably, what, about $110 or so into this. And it's really not that bad because once again, I, I wish and I, that I knew that y'all could see the grain in that or the lines below it, the surface there that look like real ivory grain. At least in my opinion, with my limited experience, it looks like real ivory grain in that. And I got them fit good as far as, you know, tightness, they're as snug as they can be. 
I've got no issues, no problems. I robbed the fair rules and the screw out of my black plastic factory grips that came on this gun, not out of the wood grips that I like. But those wood grips, they didn't fit this gun either, even though they came on an older Blackhawk. They, they still don't fit this gun, but they were a lot better than the plastic that came on it. So this is what's been going on. I saw that uh, Garrett of 11 Bang Bang had uh, had done a, or the, the 11 Bang Bang guys had done a video on uh, the Blackhawk that he got while he and I were talking about these and, and the higher pressure 45 coat stuff. And I was on a hiatus to Nashville for a granddaughter's birthday party and a big get together for her and a lot of people up there from the family and uh, up at the Nashville Zoo. Stopped by the George Dickel Distillery and got me a couple of uh, keepsakes and tried to explain to them how much they uh, should appreciate me keeping them in business. But y'all, I can't think of much else to hold you up with concerning this stuff now. Is what well, you have to decide if this is for you. I, I was negative about it until today. I did have, like I said, there was a learning curve to it. It was my own fault that I had difficulty because I got in a hurry and uh, it was a learning process. There's a learning curve to it. I can't say that it's bad material. I can't say that it's any more fragile than any other material like this because really I've never dropped any of the others on concrete and I've never tried to drill any of the others. So to me, in my, to my sensibilities and my way of thinking, the way the grain looks in this, uh, at least the imitation grain, it's really kind of convincing. I've already had one person see it and ask me if that was real ivory, and he was impressed with the looks. And of course, I didn't have them fitted that good then like I do now, or anywhere near it, and that's saying something because they're not perfect now, but they're a lot better. But I can't say that, that this is the best, but I think of what's available right now just from what limited amount of research that i've done when i was looking looking into this that this material probably visually not the burning piece of wire smell test but this this material visually from five foot away three foot away will probably look probably does resemble real ivory more than any other polymer I've seen. I've heard of one that was made in the past and offered. I don't know that it still is anymore. But I am happy with this stuff. I'm, I'm happy with, with the result. I did not like the looks. I didn't like the feel while I had, you know, the grips a little bit too thick and, and, uh, and a few of the other issues I had going on before I did my final fitment today. I wasn't as happy with it as I am now. But once again, that's no fault of the grip material or the seller. I think it's probably the grip fitter's problem. So yeah, I'll take this uh, for what it's worth. Your mileage may vary. And as always, uh, keep your whiskey bottle full. Talk to y'all later.